Just because does it produce during the... It's tough during the winter. During the winter months. Dude, the thing about growing stuff here is it's tough during the winter months and it's tough during the summer months. So like, there's like two months where it's like, I can actually grow stuff. It sounds like there's the one thing in common is like probably you. Yeah, that is the common one. <laughs> um, I mean, this is like a pretty big agricultural. Yeah, dude, I can't figure it out. No, if you think about it, and I did my research, tomatoes don't grow in temperatures over 90 degrees, but like, there's hella tomatoes everywhere in this area. So I don't understand like how they do it. They're just shaded. Um, no, dude, if you go out to the farms, they're not shaded at all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, shocks and shrunts. Cheers. Cheers. Garen O'Keefe, special guest. When I thought about making the shot cast, one of the first people that came to mind was this individual. Um, partly because uh, I would consider him a close friend of mine um, and former teammate, but also partly because of uh, his lifestyle, the way that he chooses to live and uh, the attention he gives to developing himself. And I like to surround myself with that type of person and people. So, ladies and gentlemen, Garen O'Keefe. Let's do this thing. Um, so we're going to start with a segment that I like to call rapid questions, all right? Okay. Where's my phone? So the way that this is going to work is I'm going to ask you questions and you immediately have to come up with an answer. It's 12 questions. If you do, <laughs> you have to answer them in 45 seconds. <laughs> okay. If you do not get it in 45 seconds. Is this an answer or is this opinions? What do you mean? Like, is there a right answer here? No, no, no. Okay. This, this is opinion based. Okay. If you don't get it in 45 seconds, then we will both. Actually, no, it'll just be you. You will be drinking a raw egg. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you All serious? Right. I'm serious. I'm not serious. I went to. There's even an egg shortage right now. So I went to Trader Joe's and bought the, um, the highest quality of eggs. For egg this. coin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Time starts when I answer the first question or ask the first question. Favorite music? Class rock. Favorite band? Pink Floyd. Favorite mac and cheese brand? Kraft. Favorite movie? Forrest Gump. Favorite day of the week? Sunday. Favorite month of the year? December. Favorite state? California. Davis Creamery or Baskin Robbins? Davis Creamery. Favorite math formula? Name quadratic. it. Quadratic. You have to name it. Quadratic formula? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, that's the hard, that's the hard right. one. Favorite element on the periodic table? Potassium. Favorite conspiracy theory? Um, the Denver airport. <laughs> <laughs> Dry erase board or chalkboard? Dry erase board. Ladies and gentlemen, 51 seconds. Oh, no <laughs> Karen, shot. Karen did not complete the challenge. Um, if you were wondering, this is Athletic Greens. Um, not sponsored or affiliated, but maybe yeah. someday. Yeah. I'll be right back. Are they pasteurized? I don't think so. They're pasture raised. <laughs> Close enough. So we're a little uh, nervous about drinking raw eggs. Um, I didn't really think about that very much. So I'm calling my brother. Okay, so I'm on Shawcast episode number three with Garen. Um, I did. And uh, Garen. we did a bet. If we lose uh, a, like a little game, we had to drink, drink a raw egg. Is it safe to drink raw eggs? Yeah, of course it's safe to drink raw eggs. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is that? I thought you guys were the, the raw, uh, raw food experts. No, I don't know about raw food. I don't think I've ever consumed a, like actual raw food, like a raw meat or I guess sushi. 
Yeah, I just had to find the uh, rocks the other day. It's totally safe to do it. Nice. I will do it. Okay, I will do it. Karen does not have to. All right, yeah, thank you. Too. What you gotta do is don't don't scramble it. Bite into the yolk and then taste how salty it is. <laughs> Yum. All right, thank you, dude. A very lovely texture. All right. Sounds delicious. All right. See, ya. See you guys. I will do this. All right, give me one. <laughs> we both, we both like suffer from salmonella. <laughs> I'll pick a one that looks good. <laughs> that looks healthy. That looks healthy. There is indeed a raw egg floating around in there. There we go. Alright. Three, two, one, cheers. Oh <laughs> fuck. You've been bad you've been bamboozled. Oh, You just got, you just got... I got bamboozled? You got bamboozled. <laughs> I can't see it. That's fine with me. How was it? Fine. Yeah? <laughs> Alright. The show goes on. <laughs> we should have faked it. <laughs> Dude, like, that was gross. Like a hell of bad, like, YouTube, like, like we crack it, like the frame, like, skips. And yeah. Then like... Yeah, I should have done that. <laughs> okay. Um, now that I've increased my chance of getting salmonella, uh, I'd like to move on to something a little more serious. By one twenty thousand. By one and twenty thousand. What percentage is that? It's not that bad. I don't know. <laughs> um. All right. Stoicism. Mm hmm. Stoicism uh, seems like a pretty, uh, but I think that it's getting more attention uh, in the recent years, especially over social media and the TikTok era. There are like, you know, younger teenagers pretending to be stoic um, and trying to live that lifestyle. I'd say Garen is probably the closest person that I know to like executes, it's prepares and understands stoicism. And I don't know if he's still kind of on that wave. Yeah. But I think, um, I think the way that you show up and like, you know, um, when we were playing football, it was football, uh, being prepared, knowing ahead of time, and then reacting to adversity. I think his ability to do that was really good from what I saw. What do you think about stoicism? Is it something that you still believe in or try to practice? I mean, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't say I know too much about stoicism. I know ge the general concept of it. Yeah. It's just like, which is what, like, basically, like, seeing seeing your emotions, you know, and then, like, like, looking at them and analyzing what they mean and then how to apply it, which I guess is probably a skill that I think everyone should have, and I think everyone tries to work on it. But, I don't know, I think, for me, like, through in sports, it was always, like, it kind of came from, like, and it, like an anxious place because I'm like a decently anxious person so like for me it was always like preparing preparing was like a good way to like feel comfortable I think that kind of just translates in life for me just in terms of like whether it's school or with like being around people like I'm always just think you, you're always just preparing and like seeing how you feel about different situations and like just learning from like what your what your emotions and and body's telling you and like if you feel nervous it might be because you're not prepared and so that's like kind of how I felt in yeah. sports but overall in life I just think it's a good concept to have just to be able to control your emotions and like it's never going to be a bad thing to like be in touch with yourself and knowing where what you know 
knowing if your emotions control you or if you control your emotions is yeah. never going to be a bad thing. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I feel like something that attracts me to the certain people that I, I call like mentors is their ability and their awareness of like self-development, I guess. Um, shout out, I mean, my brother and Andrew Alves. I feel like you guys have paved the way for me and then Garen as well. Um, like, what do you think is the importance of like being aware of weaknesses and then like trying to make yourself better? Because um, I see a lot of people that don't even like, I mean, don't even work on themselves. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I guess self-awareness is probably the, the biggest key, like the first step in all of that is like, just becoming aware of yourself is harder than you think. And I think like, I don't know, we all do continuously like, you know, like where am I at here in this part of my life? Where am I at in this other part of my life? And, you know, does this, is this sufficient or is this where I want to be? And I think that was probably like the, the biggest thing for me, like just in terms of like finding success in, in certain like limited ways in like athletics and like trying to become my best was like, it's more about like figuring out who you want to be. And if you don't have like a clear vision of that, like I want to be someone who like, you know, you figure out who you want to be and it's a lot easier to like develop that, develop towards like what, what type of life you want to see. So like, if you're like, I want to be someone who's reliable instead of just being like, I want to know how to like, I want to like, get an A, you know what I mean? Like, right. I want to be someone who's, you know, well-studied is a lot different than, like, I want to, you know, I want to get straight A's. It's different because it's more sustainable. Yeah. And that, I think that helped me a lot in sports because I'm, I don't know, I wouldn't consider myself the most, like, physically talented person in athletics. And so, like, I don't know, my way of digging out whatever role I had was just, like, I want to be reliable, you know? Yeah. I want to, like, you know, like, I don't, I feel like if you can figure out who you want to be, then it's a lot easier to, to work towards it because, like, your decisions are oriented to be, yeah. being something than, like, just trying to, like, set structures and rules. Yeah, so having kind of a vision of the type of person that you see yourself being or want to be yeah. and, like, working towards that. Yeah, know? that's always how I view it. Yeah. I think that that way, too, it's never, like, one issue that I feel like I came up with a lot, like, when I was younger and, like, my sports career and stuff was, like, I would set goals and then I would achieve them, but they would be very like, very specific. Like, be like, oh, I want to like be on this. I want to start on this special team. But then like once you get there, you it's like, it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. That sort of thing's over. And so you're like constantly searching for something new yeah. and like always like, re-engaging on like different like new initiatives in your in your life. And so like I felt like when I figured out like oh I can just try to be someone and like those things will come like that was big for me i sometimes feel like with a lot of athletes like they they might be good in what they do so like they might be a good football player right yeah so as long as you know and they're going to school for football as long as they're doing football well or they're succeeding other areas of their life can just like Fuck take off. a back seat yeah. and they just kind of like don't they don't develop them um and that's always kind of bothered me uh like that idea and so I've always tried to make like other parts of my life stronger so that I feel like I was just a football player. Yeah. What do you say to somebody that as long as they're getting their like their sports done or their athletics um, like they can just kind of screw off and you know uh, the rest yeah. of their life. I don't know I think part of it too is like personal opinion how, like where you, what you were raised like how you were raised and like what environment you were raised in because like for some people that like that's enough you know what i mean that's enough for, and that's i don't knock i don't knock that at all like if that's always been your like goal and your dream and your soul like <clears throat> achievement i don't know how like sustainable that is but i wouldn't knock someone for it at all you know and i think you know i think there's different approaches to it like i think me and you are pretty analytical people so like you look at like you're very self-aware you know, and so it's like, you look at where you're at all the time and you're like, where's this gonna take me in five years, 10 years, 20 years, you know? And some people like, like there's all different ways of thinking about stuff and some people are a lot more like go with the flow and they're like, I just wanna be really good 
athlete right now and like those skills will translate I think what personally works for me is like <clears throat> I don't know I have to like I don't like to do just one thing in, in a good way like I feel like for me it's always like how I do one thing I hopefully I can do everything you yeah. know and like I don't I think that's not like realistically attainable but mm -hmm. <clears throat> like at all times like you're gonna be worse at something and you're gonna screw up in one thing but like as long as you're trying to like in all different facets like socially um, like your careers or like academics that sort of thing and athletics like as long as you're trying in all those like I feel like it helps you build momentum which I think works for me and I think would work for a lot of people you know yeah that's that's my perspective on that <clears throat> but you know there's different approaches too and I think I don't think there's anything wrong with certain approaches I think <clears throat> it's not like you have to want to be doing what you're doing and some people just aren't like some people are wired differently than other people and so like that's also part of I think I've learned just being around a bunch of different types of athletes like there's a ton of different types of personalities and what, what works for one like doesn't work for another like trying to always like trying to like copy someone else's model isn't gonna work like some people are just aren't can't be motivated in certain ways yeah and vice versa I think it was Hawk now Dan Hawkins our former uh, college head football coach um, I think it was him that said how you do how you do something is how you do everything or there was some saying that like alluded there's to there's a lot of sayings yeah there's, there's a lot of good ones there's a lot of sayings and some of them are you know some of them how are, you do one thing is how you do everything yeah Probably something like that it's something like that and and that has like come to me a couple times um you know when i it doesn't really matter what you're doing but like how you i don't know organize the how like pick up after yourself in the house or you you know wash your dishes or you don't wash your dishes or you um show somebody appreciation for something they did to you uh or for you it's like how you do something is gonna somehow make its way into other things and i think they're like building small habits and i am like far from perfect if you walked in my room right now you would think i'm like zach kennedy um but <laughs> like and i that i mean that's the thing like i don't i know that i'm not like perfect in any by any means but yeah, that's the hard thing about talking about yeah this sort of stuff it's like I, i'm like always like this is what i try to do you know yeah. i'm like this yeah. is what i try to do and i like, I'm not like the most you know what i mean yeah. like, i'm not the most successful person but it like doesn't you know hurt to try and talk like bounce it off other people and stuff too definitely i think that's the thing about it it's like as long as you're showing an effort because when i the, the people that kind of irk me the most um are people that like you know have so everybody's got problems everybody's got flaws it's whether or not those people like are showing effort in 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 improving those types of things that they want to um so you kind of brought up um being more of an anxious person and i would say like i am am also that kind of way um i'd say like def definitely for me because I'd, I'd say you know i've i've you know got some anxiety uh in different areas of my life um and i know that it's definitely showed up in like sports and other things like did you ever feel uh like your anxiety sort of hindering your performance in sports or any aspects other aspects of your life i mean yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that's kind of part of like what do they say like the modern athlete you know what i mean it's like that that whole end of the spectrum is being like explored a little bit i think yeah. like nowadays and anyone would be lying to you if they told you like if they told you that you know like being me in mentally in the right state is not you know seriously doesn't seriously impact your performance so yeah of course like just there's a lot of different things in athletics that I think are kind of learned just by playing for a long time especially like through college and as you like are growing up playing sports as well like finding yourself as like a person 
while also being involved in like serious competitive athletics is definitely a hard thing because like you're we're like currently developing like an identity and something that'll like take us throughout like the rest of your life so <clears throat> you're constantly looking for those things like what's what's like my life meaning what's like my you know who am I that sort of thing and like a lot of that can get wrapped up into athletics <clears throat> and athletics isn't a stable thing like no one goes through a single season or year without like b bad performance like getting hurt or like great performance you know you feel like you're on top of the world that sort of thing and mm -hmm. so like I've been up and I've been down and like I definitely as as especially as a younger athlete and still like it's impossible to really detach yourself like your identity of yourself with being an athlete so like having those two things intertwined like definitely like you get anxious you're like oh is this my like my performance this yeah. is like is this going to keep up like when you're doing right. well you're like is this going to keep up in my and or when you're doing poorly you're like gosh like all this stuff i'm doing is, you know it's not worth anything and like that sort of like game back and forth can be hindering because you're not playing free like everyone yeah. knows what it feels like to be playing at your best and being like in your like flow state yeah. and you feel like nothing can touch you but then if you're in your head it it affects almost everything that you do and there's a lot of stuff like coming out just about how it affects like your physical body too like yeah. your recovery um like your immune system all that stuff based on like how how you're functioning mentally so like yeah it definitely has impacted me and like as i got older i got better at figuring out mm -hmm. you know that like sports is a portion it's like a portion of your life yeah and that makes it a lot better because no matter how good or bad it is on the field or <clears throat> yeah how are your performances it's not aff affecting your overall like, mental state and sense of identity and that was big for me but yeah definitely has affected my life and performance yeah i i would there there's been different times and like you said like so with a lot of athletes your identity is directly correlated to um your performance as an athlete so like like garen said like when you feel like you're not doing well in your sport therefore you're not good at your sport therefore you're not a good football player and your identity is like as a football player so you're not good at what you're supposed to be doing and so that can really be um, like destructive for some people. And I definitely think that, no, I, I've for sure seen it like play out, whether it's in football or like volleyball, beach volleyball, basketball, no matter what the sport is, people will get extremely frustrated with themselves, whether it's in a game or a practice, if they screw up, because they feel that pressure of like, I gotta perform because this is who I am. And if I'm not performing, then like I'm not, you know, and I, that's something with sports. That's not like conducive to good performance either because you're yeah. it's like unnecessary pressure in, in a high pressure environment already. Yeah. Um, it's probably more common than it isn't. You know what I mean? It's yeah. more common to happen than it, than it is for someone not to be attached to it. And it's definitely a, a skill, but there's some people who are pretty natural at it too, you can tell. It's yeah, especially, especially in college uh, athletes because they're, you know, a lot of them are on scholarship. They're here at a school because of mm -hmm. their sport. Um, it's hard. It's hard for college athletes too, because it's like most college athletes were the best, are the best athlete from their high school, from like their high school or their area. Yeah. And so, like that transition, especially for me, like from like a, I came from like a pretty small town, like 600 kids in high school. Like that transition is like a mentally it just it's interesting like it twists you off especially like coming in as like a freshman regardless of how good wherever you played before was there's people that are five years older than you yeah like <clears throat> more physically developed and so like you're not you have to learn like this whole new set of physical and like mental skill sets and that's mentally is a it's an obstacle course, I'd say. It de yeah, definitely. <coughs> I, I think it throws a lot of people off. I was just talking to one of my old, one of my old coaches, Coach Brady. Shout out, Coach Brady. Um, and he, he, we talked about kind of kids that uh, will come in to whether it is like Davis or a Big Sky School or really anywhere um, that's not like FBS. 
and I'm sure it happens in FBS too, but like kids will come in thinking like, you know, I had offers from other schools, so I'm going to come here and play immediately or, you know, I'm going to go and start and like, you know, there's no, there's, there can't be possibly anybody here that uh, works harder than me or wh whatever the case is, like they think that they're better pretty much. Um, and I remember I, I definitely tried to not like have that happen and I mentally prepared for like okay um, no matter where I go there's gonna be like people that are bigger stronger faster better more knowledgeable and even then so when I came into Davis it was like holy like holy crap like these guys are working on even like even the guys that don't look like freaks are are faster than me stronger than me better than me and that can really throw somebody off, like you were saying. Um, but yeah, I, another another reason why I brought Garen on, um, and I didn't know how this conversation was going to go. Um, but uh, we both we both suffered from um, concussions and kind of longer term concussion symptoms. And I couldn't put together a question, kind of like, I didn't know what to ask. Yeah. Uh, I mean, oh, it's an interesting topic. It's it's definitely a, like a <laughs> confusing experience. Not even the terms of like, you get hit in the head and you're like confused, yeah. you know what I mean? But like, just <clears throat> there's so much that like we, like, me and you don't know and we as like people don't know about the whole process of like head injuries and, yeah like but experiencing it is it like it's unlike any sort of health thing that you know what I mean, that you're used to experiencing just because it plays so many role like different roles in your like body's function mm -hmm. and <clears throat> how your mind functions and so like it's definitely a scary experience because you don't you don't feel like yourself and like realistically you're not operating like your normal self so that <clears throat> experience was like very confusing because you're just like you're just trying to get a grasp on like what's going on like what exactly is like wrong it's not like yeah. a flu or something where they're like all right just lay low it's like this is what usually happens you know this is what usually happens right. to you right if you you know if you take time to relax like you should probably be better by this you know window and then it does it's not that and then they're like well yeah. it's, they present themselves in different ways it's not a physical injury it's like yeah. a scrambling of what do they say like neurons or something yeah, yeah it's <clears throat> so just I realized I didn't really explain the situation but yeah I in the spring of last year, I suffered a concussion. It was my second on-record concussion, and as like a D lineman and somebody who's on the line, it definitely wasn't just my second concussion. Um, uh, I pretty much had like really elongated symptoms and tried to work my way back a couple times. And each time I tried to, I, my symptoms were getting worse. So like, I'd be awake in bed at 2 a.m. with my head pounding, like not I couldn't sleep. Um, couldn't really eat, my appetite was very low, uh, and like Garen said, it's it's really tough, it's, it's a very tough place to be, and it's something that you don't understand unless you go through it, and I think that goes with everything, but like, I know as, as growing up, like, playing football, I was never really aware of it, and if other people claim they had concussions, it's always kind of like, oh, like, yeah. You can't prove it, so you must be like a pussy. You know, you must be um, want I don't know to get out of practice or um, you're soft. You should just play through it. And I think that's something with football, especially going through this with myself. Mm -hmm. That um, and like with the NFL, all the things that have yeah. been happening in the NFL this year that I think should change and probably will end up I mean, changing. I will say we're both also on that note though. Like this was a pretty good like place to be like Davis is a pretty good place to be for in that regard like I would have like nothing but respect for like all of our like medical staff yeah. and coaching staff and everything like they took care of us very like very well yeah. throughout the process which I don't think is is 
I hope is common, but I, I, from what I've heard, it's not as common as I think it should be yeah. in a lot of programs, and I think we're pretty fortunate in that way. No, definitely, I, and that's what I was about to say. Like, a lot of times it's very stigmatized, and I think Davis, like you said, it was a great place to be because it isn't really. Um, I think no matter, like, science as a whole is still discovering kind of the brain, and we don't know everything about it, and head injuries and whatnot, but like, I was never like criticized <clears throat> by a teammate. Um, personally, I was never called, you know, um, soft or, or a pussy or anything. Uh, and by the staff, it was taken uh, very carefully. And like, I felt like I was being given the um, the proper care and like thought and attention that I needed. Uh, definitely. Yeah. But it's definitely like you said, it's eye opening experience and. But I guess, I don't know, the way I think about it is it's like, it was one of the hardest, probably the hardest experience of my life is just feeling that way. But, you know, that's, it's hard to, I don't know, it's hard to describe without going through it, but you feel like you learn a lot, learn a lot about yourself and, you know, I'm not right. saying that like I'm glad, I'm glad it happened at all, right. but it's, you know, that's because it's the risk that you run playing yeah. football and, and I don't know, for me, I was having a hard time with it just because you know how it is, like the, with all the stuff coming out about like playing years of football, CTE, and like all the unknowns and effects of that. Like, personally, I was like, oh shit, like this is concerning. Uh, especially after I got one concussion and I realized how it felt to just not feel right. And so, like, but I had like this conversation with my dad, and we we're like, you know, but there's every, like, in everything that you do in life, there's like, there's risk. Yeah. And <clears throat> so, like, he was just like, well, you, like, you go snowboarding a lot. Like, the, the chances of you getting hurt out there, like, there's there's risk there. And it's like, yeah. if if you want to avoid that, because I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to, like, play. I was just kind of in my head about it. Like, I, 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 I did want to play, and I was going to play. And, you know, <clears throat> but, like, just, like, the idea of that that risk is, like, is scary, but then you realize how many risks there are out there. And yeah. I think that's, that for me was like a big conversation where I was like, okay, that's just kind of, this is part of the deal in football and in like a lot of areas of life. Like you can avoid all risk, but then what are you avoiding it for, you know? Exactly. I, at first, the first few months that I kind of was going through it and ended up um, medically retiring, I, I I almost wanted to demonize football in my mind. Um, I almost wanted to be like, you know, this sport shouldn't exist, and this is like really harmful. This is like a really dark side of sports, um, and football especially. And in my head, I was like, you know, very frustrated with the situation, obviously, because I couldn't play and I wasn't feeling right. But exactly like, like you said, you know, the more you think about life in general, you get in a car and you're risking your life. Um, yeah. you, you go snowboarding, you, um, anything you do, you know, you, there's, there's risk involved with it. And, um, so that, that really, that really helps me, that really helped me process it. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, yeah. And I mean, there's probably a little more risk in one thing versus the other, but I, it was for me, like, obviously there's more risk of a head injury playing football than a lot of things, but it's like. I don't know, it was just the general concept that helped me. It was like that, you know, you're gonna be risking something doing most things that are like, I don't know, worthwhile and interesting. Like there's risks to everything and the risks are different, but he was just like, dude, like, you gotta realize you take risks all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, um, and it's, it's something that my brother also went through kind of at the same time as me. Um, uh, Shunkle, <laughs> the, sh the shog uncle. Shunkle. Uh, so, you know, my brother's my closest, the, the closest person to me. So I was really grateful. I got to kind of, I was yeah. grateful I got to share an experience and have somebody to comfort me. But Garen and I definitely got closer um, during the whole process because of the nature that we, we both be at practice or we both be at a game. You know, just watching them and we got we got to talk a lot um for those of you that don't know um lan larison uh he is 
um, a, sh uh, a shrunt. <laughs> So whenever I say shogs and shrunts, he is a shrunt, and that is by nature of he's pretty shogging. You know, he he has anti-shog moments, but he's pretty shogging, and um, but he's too light. He's too light to be a shog, you know. So he's a shrunt. Um, but I told I made the deal with him in terms of like weight, like body weight. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's he's body weight light. Um, He's been under 205 like the whole time he's been here. So I told him, Lane, if you ever get over 205 pounds for a week period, then I will deem you a shog. So by the end of this week, if he stays 207 or above 205, I'm gonna make a video about, uh, we're gonna have a ceremony. Um, a shog ceremony? A shog ceremony. Can cut ceremony. the weight after? He, I mean, theoretically he could, but I'll just have to take his prize away. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so I got some questions on uh, Instagram yesterday. Okay. Let's see if there are any good ones. Uh, how's the stomach feeling? Stomach's feeling fine. Um, the aftertaste of the egg is still in my mouth. Still? So I'm trying to like wash it. That was, I thought it was just gonna be a weird consistency and like not like a lot of flavor. <laughs> There's like, it's gross. Yeah. I, I almost puke. Uh, all right, question coming at you from Chuba, my, um, James as I like to call him. Uh, what's something you never have any thought about but are very grateful for? Well, if I never thought about it, I wouldn't know. Yeah. No, that, that's true. I'm like, what is? Now I just gotta think of something that I haven't thought about. Question from question from Chuba. What's something that you've never thought about? <laughs> and you have to be grateful for it. Uh, like something maybe maybe, maybe something you don't appreciate as much as, as you, much as you, you should, should. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. Hmm. I you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Grocery stores. Grocery stores. Like, think about that. I appreciate grocery stores a lot now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> think about that. Someone has to farm or whatever. Yeah, farm most of it. Your food. Then it gets sent somewhere. Like think about all the places your some food goes, especially like food that's like pro like processed. Like someone farms it, and they take it somewhere. Yeah. Like, I mean, the farming itself is is crazy because they got yeah. plant it, they got like yeah. tend to it for like years. Basically, their entire life is built around like making food, and then like a lot of the stuff gets sent somewhere, and then it gets like processed, put together, boxed, sent back somewhere else, then. They have to distribute it, and this comes in on like a daily basis. There's just like yeah. food just like pouring into like a grocery store. I think about that. Yeah, then no, that's that's a really good point, especially because of the fact that that I mean, farming has existed for a very long time, but there were times yeah, really where like time. there there were times where like you you couldn't just walk into a market or a grocery store and buy stuff like that. Like you had to go farm it yourself or go get it from somewhere, like the logistics yeah. side of it too. Like. Yeah, plus we figured out how to grow things out of season. Like I went to Trader Joe's because I needed to make some, tom uh, I needed some tomatoes because I was gonna make salsa and there were tomatoes there on the shelf and that's not like, you, you wouldn't be able to grow tomatoes during the like <laughs> December, yeah. January. Can't grow, I can't grow them any time here. I, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't. Uh, I've got a sign and everything, but I don't know how to grow. Um, for me, I would say, my mind went to people. I would say my roommates, even though, you know. Like Zach. E even though Zach is there. <laughs> no, it's like, I get a lot of joy and it's more present when I come back from break, but like being around the people that I am. Um, and like I've, I've found the past couple times like uh, that it's not very common 
Like, I guess I'm thinking of myself, my, myself, I'm like, you know, when I'm 40 and 50, I'm gonna think back to my college years and yeah. be like, shit, that was really cool. Like, I got to live with people that were my age, going through the same things, yeah. and like, you don't get that experience. I like, think about that. I always think about that. Like, you're like, like, when I was moving out of like my old house, I was just like, damn, that's crazy. Like, I'm not, I guess like I still live with like my friends now, but I'm not gonna get to live with, you don't get to live with your friends for very long, like a yeah. very long period of time. Like you're usually living with your family and you have friends and then like what, for five or six years? I mean, it depends on like what you do and where you go, but most of the time people spread out and stuff. But living with like, being able to live with like four or five of your like friends is pretty, pretty cool. Pretty sweet. I think about sixth grade, sixth grade and me like at, at summer camp, like all the shenanigans that went on, like you just get to have that every day. Oh. <laughs> Resume. We don't pause around here. Um, what else? Coming here from Andrew Alves. <laughs> Opinion on drinking full calorie sodas. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's better to drink full calorie sodas than no calorie sodas. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Explain yourself. Because if you're gonna drink a soda, just drink soda. You know what I mean? Just drink it. <laughs> <laughs> like, just have a soda. It's like, I don't know. What if you it's like- It's like skinny ice cream, like. Yeah. It still sucks. It's still like, like you're not running away from the fact <laughs> that it's like still ice cream, but now it <laughs> tastes shitty and it's still not good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. When you talk about ice cream, it's like people that are in diets are like, yeah, how can I get my halo, 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 or halo, halo top, and how could I do like my own ice cream? Like, you shouldn't be eating ice cream. Either do or don't. Like, yeah, that's my thing. I don't care. Do do whatever the hell, do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. But like, no calorie soda. Just drink full calories. <laughs> <laughs> Just drink full calorie soda because it's gonna taste better. Yeah. I mean, if it's for taste, I understand. But also, I feel like there's a lot of stuff in there that, like, I don't know, it's, just, it's just too good to be true. Like, if something, if something tastes great, like you know, like soda where it's like zero calories, zero anything. Yeah. You're like, then what is? What is? Yeah. You're just, you're just tricking me on the label. <laughs> there's something in here. Yeah, that's true. What if you like the taste? Of a diet soda better than I the taste. Go, I don't know. Go for it. Though. I like diet coke better than I like Coca Cola by yeah. a mile. Yeah, they so. go for it. I don't know. Okay. But if you're like ah, like I'm like I'm gonna really reel it in here and like get myself a get myself a <laughs> diet Pepsi. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. I see. I see the mindset. It's more of like a yeah. Um, Tyshawn. Touch on white comes in with a question. How does one become Shogun? Um, I have no clue. You don't have any clue? <laughs> um, I feel like Garen's pretty proficient in understanding what a Shog is. Shog? When I think of a Shog, I just think of a, like a, <laughs> like a beefy, just masculine guy, but he's got a little sensitive side to him. Okay. You know? Okay. I think, yeah. So a little, he's got a heart. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So are you saying if Tyshawn wants to become Shogun, or if somebody wants to become Shogun, you're saying that you need to gain a little bit of weight <laughs> and be a little more sensitive? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> in a good way. You know. Yeah. No, I. I know you're. I know you mean. I, I'd say like because I was explaining this to somebody earlier. They asked me again, what's a, what's a Shog? I said it's somebody who I think the phrase is walks to the beat of their own drum. Wait, is that the phrase? It's something like that. Like they live life on their own terms and whether it, it's honestly, okay. I explain shock to people and they think of something, somebody fat or like <laughs> obese. And yes, that, that could be a shock. But what's also shocking. If you're not like, if you don't care what other people think, you could be like, the, I don't know the skinniest person because that's the way you want to live your life. Skinny shog. You could be. A, you could be like. Well, I guess then you'd be a shrunt. <laughs> but like it's shogging. You know, you could be juiced up on freaking testosterone and trend and be shredded and be a shog. But you don't care that that, that like <laughs> people think you're an idiot for taking steroids. There's all types of shog. All types of shogs. Yeah. Uh, Different classes. 
Different, yeah, definitely <laughs> different. It's 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 a spectrum. Um, coming from who's the first shog? Who's the first shog? Yeah. Uh, I would say I don't like saying this because you know it's kind of tooting my own horn, but so it's like I mean I. Me and me and like one of my buddies kind of came up with it, so probably me and him. Oh, I meant like the first shog in history, like historically. Oh, <laughs> historically the first shog. Uh, King Henry VIII. <laughs> Why? Because uh, if you look at his armor, <laughs> his armor literally. I've seen it in person. His armor has like a big gut for his belly. I think he was like pretty overweight. Um, <laughs> didn't he like? Okay, this is not fit into the shog um, category, but I think he like killed his wives or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like not shog, but he killed. But he, he killed, killed his, his wives. wives. <laughs> um, who do you? Who do dude, you mean? I mean, that is like back then too. If, like you were fat, like. <laughs> that was kind of that was like a flex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if he's your armor's so big that you have to have like a like a gap in it, they're like, he is so much food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who else? I mean, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was shogging. He was a shog. He's tall. He's like six four, six five, something like that. George Washington was probably a little more shocked. <laughs> A little Abraham more shocked than Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. Why? Because he's because George Washington would like scrap. Like Abraham Lincoln was more like a political force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he cared. He cared a lot about his image. Yeah. Um, had to keep it clean, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> Adam Lopez comes in with a question. Favorite shoe? I'm not a big shoe guy, personally. Uh, I rock with Vans. Athletically, uh, like issued stuff, <laughs> or I've got Nike Blazers, but that's that's literally it. I'm not a shoe guy whatsoever. You know, it's a really good shoe. You ever tried on an Allbird? Allbird? Allbirds? I think they're called Allbirds. No, no, no. They're really, they're like they're wool, uh -huh. and they're like it's like wearing like UGG slippers, but like I wear them <laughs> like class and stuff. All birds. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. Check those out. I do have toe shoes, actually. Really? Yeah, I've got amphibious toe shoes. That's probably my <laughs> favorite one. That could be, I'm ready for anything. Amphibious. <laughs> I gotta say amphibious, like, that's just a water shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you can't use any water shoes on land. Yeah, yeah. Um, makes it sound cool, though. Uh, Jimmy Williams, J-Dubs, who is also Shog, comes in with a question. Who are the current shogs in pro sports? Mm. That's a really good question. Oh, you know, he's not playing right now, but you know who I feel like would fit the mold? Huh. You know Glenn Big Baby Davis? No. Dude. Glenn Big Baby Davis? He was on, I'm pretty sure this is his name. Let me look him up. Oh. He's 6'9". <laughs> I don't know how much he weighed. He was on the Celtics and, uh, and the Clippers. He was 6'9", 290. 290. Like, not like a, like, beefy, like, like Dwight Howard weighed a lot, you know? Yeah. Because he was ripped. Like, he's just like, Bleh. He's just big. <laughs> he's yeah. beefy, dude. Um, I would say, uh, what's Travis Kelsey's brother? Jason Kelsey. Jason? Yeah. Jason Kelsey's a shog. He's a shog. Um... 95% of offensive linemen in the NFL are shocked. Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith is like shogging, but he was like, he was ripped, so I don't know. Is David Ortiz still playing baseball? Oh, he was a shog. Dude, uh, who's that one pitcher that was on? I think he was on the Mets. Was he a big guy? Oh, he's beefed up, dude. He's big. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Baseball that much? Yeah, me either. <laughs> All right, he's like pretty good too. All right, I'll look him up and I'll put. I'll try to put a picture of him. <laughs> um, there was oh Adrian Gonzalez is a shog. Mm -hmm. Oh Sam Darnold was the original uh, NFL shog really? when he was at was he at USC? Was he at USC? 
Oh, yeah, I think so. Sam Darnold was a shock in, in college. I'm, I'm not like a big. I don't know a lot about football. Yeah. Uh, neither do I. Um. What else we got here? Do you have an opinion on coming in here from Trevor King? Do you have an opinion on why slash why are not sumo deadlifts valid slash invalid? No, no, I have zero opinion on that. Sumo, what sumos? That's like wide. Sumo is like the wide stance. Super wide. There's, there's like, yeah. Like, yeah. There's there's like a. Uh, I don't deadlift like that. Neither I don't deadlift like that either. Um, but there was like a trend going around where they were sent like Chris Bumstead was like, yeah, sumo deadlifting is cheating um, it's not cheating if you're trying to get your sumo deadlift heavier uh, oh, so but people are counting it as their deadlift I guess so I guess people are like oh I sumo deadlift this much and they're like well that's not a real deadlift so uh, well I mean if you tell them that it's sumo yeah <laughs> I don't really understand <laughs> the controversy because <laughs> if you tell them it's a sumo then like I don't know yeah that's I'd be like saying like, but if you say it's your deadlift, that's just not. Correct. That's yeah. That, I mean, if yeah, if you are claiming that it's your deadlift, then it is cheating. But like, that'd be like incline. That'd be like saying your like flat bench is like your incline bench. Like be like, oh like, I just like push like three plates incline. Yeah. Like, it's two different workouts. Yeah, you're, you're you're comparing two things and trying to make it the same. Um, that's that's all the questions that I had on Instagram. Um, I feel like you're scrolling through a lot. Oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't use like half of them. Yeah, I know. I did say anything goes on Instagram, so I got a few that yeah. are pretty good. <laughs> but I can't, can't say them. Uh, all right, I mean, that's pretty much all I had. Uh, I'll probably go back and wish that I had asked Garen something else, and you know maybe maybe we'll do another. We'll have to do it again. We'll do another episode. I I like to cut to get repeat guests on. Um, Sorry that I didn't drink the egg with you. No, that's okay. I did it. I did. I drank the egg for Garen because I didn't want him to get salmonella. I wanted to get salmonella. Yeah. Uh, it's all good, but he just had it last week, so he's immune. Yeah. <laughs> I got my vaccination. <laughs> all right. Jogs and shrimps. We're out.